that we're really going to um let me see what the time says and then the next few minutes okay this is 804 so maybe by 806 in the next two minutes we'll start let's just wait for people maybe a few people more by 805 or 806 in the next one minute or or two we should start but for the people who are around thank you guys for joining and for joining right early i know that um nigerians like to work with um you know African time, right? We want to give things time. We want to wait 10 minutes till, you know, let the event start proper before you show your face. But we're not doing that here tonight. So we really want to get into the, the main focus or the main reason why we're here. here. And uh, maybe in the next one minute, we're going to start. But while we're waiting for that, I just want to connect with everybody here. Please tell me where you're joining your name and where you're joining from. If you can, and somebody is unmuted, pop up your mic. Um, it's fine, I've done that. So please just tell me where you're connecting from, your name, where you're connecting from, and your field. I mean, I don't mind. Like, what do you do? Um, what is your field? What is your sector? This might also help us to, you know, just understand the type of people that we have here. We have just one minute more, and then we will start. Okay, I think, go. I think we're there. Sandra, my name is Sandra. Sandra. Yes, I was saying three to go. I was waiting for you to stop. My name is Sandra Ede. I'm joining in from Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm a virtual assistant. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for joining, Sandra. Who is going next? So administrative space, right? So when you're using ChatGPT, I'm already thinking of what you would need it for. So who will go next? And if you don't want to unmute your mic to speak, uh, we would have an advocate for muting your mic. If you don't want to unmute your mic, please drop it in the chat room. Um, that might also be faster for you if you don't want to unmute. Drop it in the chat room, your name and where you're connecting from. And then I think we will start. Uh, okay, mate. It's Samuel. Um, I'm joining from the UK and I'm an accountant. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you for joining, Samuel. Thank you so much for being here. Thank this you. This is Shama. Joining, Shama. From, yeah, joining from Ipswich, UK, data scientist. Awesome. Thank you for joining, Shoma. Good to have you. Thank you. Who is going next? I'm Angie Deka. I'm an administrative assistant from Lagos. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I, 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 love, I love the diversity in the skills and the skill sets that we're having here. So I've heard virtual assistants, you know, administrative space, data, accounting. I'm hoping we'll have more varied roles and career paths here tonight. Any other person going next? Who wants to unmute? Okay. Joan. My name is um, Joan Jerry. Um, I'm joining from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I'm an HR analyst. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for joining, Joan. Um, I'm also going to, I'm waiting. Is there any other person going next? I want to begin to share my screen. Okay. Good evening, Hi. everyone. Somebody else. Okay. Okay. My name is Bulwat Pe Omileye. Um, Talking from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm a virtual assistant. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, uh, Boluatite. Thank you. Who is going next? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good My evening. name is Kendi Boyeye from Potakot, and I'm a UI UX designer. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for joining, Kenny. Good to have everyone. I think um, if any other person joins us, they can always drop it in the chat room. Um, I think we've been able to cover everybody. Um, if there's anybody who is here to speak, I decided to say we should unmute to speak because we are not so much here, so it's fine. We can accommodate everybody. Um, but if other people join, um, Sandra, you can just drop us in the chat room as you join us. Please introduce yourself. You know, somebody can just drop that in the chat room for us so that when people join, they just know the procedure. But there's no time. Like I said, we're kickstarting. We want to spend 40 minutes here. And if we don't spend the 40 minutes, if we have a reason to come back, uh, I mean, it might just be maybe for more questions. Maybe we have more questions to take. Uh, maybe we have more specific things to discuss. And I might not need to record that anymore. But this recording is really for 40 minutes. And then we'll be done with it. So I really want to welcome everybody. I believe that the reason why we are here or why you're here, why you have decided to join us tonight, we had over 80 80 um, registrations, and that's the honest truth. Over 80 people registered to be a part of this. But one culture that I found out is, you know, when things are being done for free, 
Africans or Nigerians or people generally do not really value it. That's number one. Number two, when you then put a process to it, register and then get a link, people also find that difficult to do. They just want you to share the link and then people just join. No, it doesn't work that way. We do that for IG, but this is Zoom. So let's, um, let's do things the way they should be done. And that's why I really want to appreciate everybody who is here. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. So today, Outnovate every Friday, we have conversations like this that are shaping culture and defining the narratives, you know, for African talents like you and I. And today is one of those days. And, um, you know, what we're really looking at is AI for beginners, how to advance your career with artificial intelligence. And my name is Temito Kolukunle. Um, Temi for short, it's fine. And I really just want to welcome everybody, you know, to this session. Uh, for those who don't know so much about me, like I said, my name is Temi. I'm an eight figures freelancer in Naira, eight figures in Naira. I'm an Upwork expert vetted, which is the top 1%. I'm a Forbes coach and then a consultant, a global talent consultant. So I recruit HR consulting. I recruit for organizations, both local and international, you know, for tech talent and of course, non-tech roles as well. And so we recruit. I'm also a transformational speaker. I speak keynote speaker, public speaker, everything speaking, you'll find me there. And um, I'm also the founder of Outnovately Africa. Outnovately Africa is my expression for consulting and training. And so I'm the privileged founder and CEO of Outnovately Africa. And that is me, you know, in a nutshell. What do I do in my coaching? Because people also wonder, you're a Forbes coach. So what, what areas do you coach in? So freelancing and then career. So career coaching and freelancing coaching. Life coach, maybe very soon, but I don't like to get too deep, you know, we take it a step at a time. We're getting there. We're getting there. So that is me in a nutshell. And today is really understanding AI. There's been a, a lot of buzz. You know, there's been a lot of everybody talking about AI, you know, moving into tech. We're pivoting into tech. And I'm wondering, is it that there are no other roles? Are there no other skills that we can make money with? Will everybody move into tech? Do we all have to be in tech? I mean, we celebrate the people in our midst who are already in tech. Um, or associating skill sets that are in tech, or people who are providing services and their skills and expertise and experience within a tech sector. They are not necessarily a techie, but they are providing their services or they are working within a tech organization. Um, and so we commend people like that. But for people who have no interaction with tech, so a lot of times we meet conversations like this with, must everybody know this thing? Must we all learn software, you know, development, programming, coding? The truth is, no, we don't all have to be, you know, coders or programmers or software developers. But one thing we just need to understand is the world is moving. Just like now, you can't be arguing with someone now that it is luxury to have Netflix. It used to be luxury, uh, you know, because you can as well just go, there's, a, you know, while we were growing up, we used to go and rent all those, you know, DVD, hard copy, you, you start it into the DVD, the player. I'm not even sure they sell those players anymore. So technology moved, the world moved forward and we just found a better way to do things. And so we just found out that Netflix is faster to see movies, to watch movies or DSTV. So who is renting um, cassette, they had one all over the place. We're still doing that, not anymore. And so it's the same thing with Blackberry, with Nokia and then Apple came in and so many other technologies that have come to disrupt you know, our lives, um, the world that we live in and the way we work. So the way we work will no longer be the same because of technology. So understanding artificial intelligence and interacting with technology does not mean you have to be a programmer or you have to be a, you know, you have to be a coder, software developer. No, it just means that you are finding tools and technologies to make your life easier, to make your work easier, regardless of the sector you are playing in, of your role, your career path, your profession, your background, your expertise, you're just finding tools, softwares, you know, technologies that can aid your work, make your life easier. That is really what it means to interact with AI, interact with technology. It doesn't mean that you, everybody has to go and learn something in tech. And so this is the definition that I like to give for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence refers to the development of computer systems that can perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence you know, such as learning, reasoning, and problem solving. You know, when we used to see all these movies where, you know, we see robots making decisions and we see certain things happening, we're always wondering like, 
how did these guys even think about it? But in recent time, I'm beginning to see in reality what I used to see in movies. You know, those things we used to see, and we're like, these guys are so smart. How are they thinking? You know, what, where is their mind? They're like in 2035 already. They're already thinking about things. But do you know those things we used to see in movie, robotics, you know, machine learning, uh, all of those things are becoming reality, right? So that is the, you know, that is the world we live in right now. And the earlier we catch up on that, the better. So what are the types of artificial intelligence we have? Because artificial intelligence is so broad, it's so broad. You know, we have machine learning, we have natural language processing, and we have computer vision. Now, I'm laying all of this foundation before we now get to where we are going, so that we have an understanding. So that when somebody talks about artificial intelligence, where you are, you are not thinking they are saying something so deep, like something so no, 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 no. Let's just take it a step at a time. So, machine learning is a part of AI or is a type of artificial intelligence. And it involves training a computer system to recognize patterns and make predictions based on data. So, for example, your Google map is a type of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Do you know that if you have five alternative routes or three alternative routes to take, your Google map will automatically calculate for you the ETA, the estimate of arrival. Somebody is unmuted. Uh, Popo Kenny, please mute yourself. Um, I think there's a baby in the background. Thanks. Can you mute yourself if you can? Sorry, thank you so much. So it will calculate for you the shortest route to take. It is up to you to take that route or not. But based on the intelligence that that tool has, it's able to make a decision. It's the same thing across board with some of the tools and technologies that we have. The same thing with natural language, which is really where we're going tonight. Natural language is a type, natu natural language processing is a type of artificial intelligence and it involves the development of algorithms that can understand and interpret human language. And the most popular you know, example of that is chat GPT, chat GPT, which is what we're gonna focus on tonight. So they are able to understand like human and respond to you like human. So it's called the natural language processing. And then the final one for tonight is computer vision. Of course, this is the development of systems that can inter, um, interpret visual information, um, like images, like videos. We have tools like Meet Journey. I mean, I've been using the tool for the past one year or more, more than a year, I think for close to two years now. I use it to edit my pictures professionally. Like I don't need to go to a studio. If I do go to a studio, it's fine. But even when I go to a studio, I'm not satisfied because I have tools that I can use to edit my picture perfectly like I went to a studio. I mean, if you go to my page, I say this all the time as an example. If you go to my Instagram page, for example, you see so many pictures and you would think I took them in the studio. No, I took them in my house with my phone. And then I'm able to use a tool, a software, a technology to edit it. That is part of artificial intelligence. So in one way or the other, you have been interacting with AI, you just didn't know. But now that you know, let's move forward. So artificial intelligence has the potential to revolutionize, uh, revolutionize various industries. And this is where the fear of people come in. You know, your job these days. Somebody asked me a question some month ago. She was part of our volunteer team. And then she went away for some time. And then she came back uh, at the beginning of the year that, oh, she's now available to volunteer. And you know, the response I gave her was, I said, sis, thank you for coming back. But actually the role you were, you know, your function, the role you were functioning in before you left, Artificial intelligence has taken over. ChatGPT is now what is doing that for us. So she used to be the one doing the research, the content. As I see, ChatGPT has taken over your work. We now have, you know, ChatGPT doing that for us. We just have somebody who's now coordinating that. And that is real life. That's just volunteering. Though. How much more real life work? And this is where I wanted to get practical. I want you to begin to think about a way you think artificial intelligence can disrupt your sector or your industry. Have you, be, have you, are you, seen are you noticing any pattern have you begun to notice any way in any form that artificial intelligence can disrupt or take your job away because sometimes we say god forbid but these things are already happening and you know from healthcare to finance to transportation there's so many of them i mean you see artificial intelligence or ai power systems they can diagnose what is wrong there are tools that people are creating now. You don't even need to go to the hospital. They're able to determine what is wrong with anybody and all of these things, right? And one thing I want to say at this point is 
Nobody is saying that artificial intelligence is going to take your job. It's not going to take my job. What will happen is the person using artificial intelligence can take your job. So artificial intelligence might not necessarily take your job, not necessarily, but the person using it or the person who knows how to use it, the company who knows how to use it can take your job, right? That's where we are, you know, when it comes to that. And then, so just looking at it broadly, I decided to do a little bit of a research, but for people who want to explore that line, where are the career paths? What are the opportunities in that area? There are so many of them. Machine learning engineer, they are making about 100 and about from $112,000 to about $150,000. Data scientist. Now, all of this data we're seeing here is a rough estimate. And these salaries can be different, whether in location, your experience, you know, the company size, and all of those things, you can factor it. Like, I mean, I can ask, the, I don't want to put them on the spot anyway. I can ask the people who are on the call, who are not in Nigeria, who are in certain part of the country, and who are in some of these roles, like how much they earn or what is the range. Yes, maybe it might not be close to this, I don't know. But on the average, if you do your research from certain parts of the country, this is like the rough estimate or an average fee that you can earn. AI research scientist, natural language processing, robotics engineer, AI product manager, computer vision engineer, AI ethics specialist, I love this, AI consultant, deep learning engineer, and so on and so forth. So the question then is, uh, on the, which of these is relevant to us? Well, there are so many tools, like I said. I want us to now do a deep dive. Which of these tools is relevant to us? Like I said, we're gonna be focusing on that GPT and how you can use it. So leveraging on the latest AI tool. So GPT came on board, I think November last year and literally just took everybody by storm. In fact, I think I didn't use it for the first one month because I was wondering, there were some other tools I was using and I'm like, so what is special about this GPT? That everybody's screaming about but then i began to try it out i began to try my hands on it and then that's when i figured that oh my god this is gold if only you know people can understand what this thing can do but do you know that from that time till now it's about five months or six months now there's so many people who still don't know what this Running in tool progress. there's so many people who still don't know what this tool is about how to use it and that is why i said we're going to put this class together and we're going to have it for beginners. And then we are going to relate it to career development. How can you leverage on this for your growth? So what is ChatGPT? It's a language model. Like I said, there's natural language processing. You know, that's part of the role that we said on, a part of the types of AI. So ChatGPT is also one of those language models. It was developed by OpenAI and it used deep learning algorithms to generate human-like responses to whatever you impute. And we're gonna go there for practical now. So that GPT can be used to power different AI solutions for your business, for career. And there are so many other tools that have been leveraged. People are now using ChatGPT to build other tools. They are using it as an API, you know, web extensions, just to build other tools that, you know, that is changing lives, changing the game for a lot of things. But we're gonna get practical with ChatGPT and I'm going to go there now. But before we get to this practical section, I want to ask, have you heard of ChatGPT before? Please answer in the comment section and have you used it before? Please talk to us in the comment section. Have you used it before? Have you heard of it before? If you have, please let us know. I want to see the comments. Let's go. Yes, I've heard about it, not used it yet, okay? Yes, I have, and I use it. Sandra says, yes, I have. Joanne says, I have heard. I haven't used it. Amarachi says, I have heard, and I've used it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, who else? Guys, we're waiting for you. I've heard about it, but I haven't used it. Bolo at fair. Okay, okay. I've heard about it, but I haven't used it. So, Labisi said, I've heard about it, but I've not used it. Okay. All right, we're waiting for one more. Who else has used it? Okay. Okay, so let's go. Um, as others join in, or as you remember, if you've used it, please let us know. I have heard about it, but not used it. That's it. Awesome. So that's totally fine. So this is what it looks like, right? This is ChatGPT in all of its glory. 
it looks like a random chart. It looks like, okay, when you just open a chart, I don't know if you guys can still see my screen. Um, I've been sharing my screen saying, so I don't know if you guys can see, but on my phone, I'm, I'm still seeing my presentation. Please confirm in the chat if you can see my new screen. I'm sharing chat GPT now. Yeah, okay, we can see it. Awesome, thank you. So this is what it looks like in all of its glory. This thing gives me joy. Whenever I see it, I just like it. I just love it because it has really changed the game. It has changed the game. So this is what it looks like. And you can go ahead to register by just going to Google and type in OpenAI. And when you open, when you get to OpenAI, you click on it, you find a place. So maybe we should do that right now. You sign up. So for people who have not used it, I'm just gonna show you because there's so many other associating open AI that are not the real one though, so that you don't go and open because I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I opened it and it was sending me to download an app. It is not an app. They don't have an app yet. It is still a website. So you're gonna use the website URL to access the website. So this is what open AI looks like. And then you can then, there's even GPT-4. There's an advanced version. So this is where we are. And then you can now come down to try ChatGPT, And this is what it looks like. Now it will take you to a sign up page. Maybe because I'm logged in, it brought me back to my chat. So you want to try that. It will tell you to sign up. And then you know your email address, your phone number. They are going to send a code. And that's it, pretty much. And then you're here. And so when you get here, this is like a chat. It's like your WhatsApp chat. Like you're chatting with people. And this is where it gets practical. I really want us to get practical at this point. Um, they've given examples, the capabilities and the limitations. Now, examples, you can tell you to explain anything. You can tell you to write anything. You can tell you to, you can chat with it like you're having a conversation with it, uh, with someone. The capabilities, you can remember what you said earlier and then respond to you based on what you had, the conversation you both had. Just assume you're speaking to someone. It can help you do follow up. You can tell you to correct something that is doing. And it can also decline inappropriate requests. There are questions you ask ChatGPT and it will tell you, I cannot do that. It is unethical. Except you use reverse engineering, it will not answer you. There's something called reverse engineering. There is time we might get to it. And then there are the limitations. Of course, the limitations, it may give you incorrect information sometimes. Um, and then you tell it to correct itself. It will even apologize to you. It might also tell you that, you know, there's a load on the system. At that moment, you can come back later. Those things happen once in a while. You just refresh your page and we move again. You go back again. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. You just refresh and you go back again. So this is where it gets practical. Now, if you look to the left, on that deep place that I'm scrolling, these are all of the work. So whenever you do anything, it saves it for you, like a chart. It's like when you have a chat with someone, this is all the chat. So it saves it for you on the left where for, for I, I think for as long as you started using it. So I'm sure I can get all the way to last year, to 2022, I'm gonna get there. But I mean, that's not what we're trying to do, but I'm just trying to explain the user interface for you, just for you to understand how it works. It's not showing from your end. Is it my screen that is not showing or when you try to sign up? Um, Joanne, let me know what is not showing. So this is what it looks like. Now, this is where we chat. And I'm going to try some different prompts. There are so many things you can ask it. My screen, oh, I think you should check again. Guys, can you see my screen? Please confirm. Because I can't see my own screen on my second device. Yes, okay, so I think it's from your side. You want to adjust something very quickly. Maybe it's network. You can leave and join again. So very quickly, because of time, let's give you an example of a, for career professional, like we said, we're focusing on career professional. What are the possible questions? What are the possible areas you need help as a career professional? What are the possible work you need to get done? Maybe not even career professional, maybe you're here, you're an entrepreneur, you are, you are a content creator, you are an online you know, entrepreneur, whatever you do, you can use the chat GPT. I'm only saying career professionals, career professionals, because I feel like that sort of summarizes the target audience or the people that we have here. So let's start with drafts. I mean, this is just an example. Hi, AI. Are you going to give it a name? Please draft a comprehensive um, article about 
career development. Let's see. Now, it has started and automatically, you will notice it saved it on the left as a new chart. And it's going to rename it for you. You see how it is writing it. So, I don't know if you guys can see, steps in career development. It's so straightforward and it's giving you the breakdown, self-assessment, career exploration, goal setting, skill development, networking, job search. Now it's giving you tools and resources for career development again career assessment, job search websites, professional associations, mentors, training programs, continuing education. In conclusion, career development is an essential part. Now, I can go to my Upwork to let you know how much someone charged me last year to write five article for me. They charge per article. And so per article, there's a fee. I think about $50 for five articles or something. And thank God, that was the first one I gave to her before I now just discovered that GPT. That was the last time. So with ChatGPT, you can sit down and think of something, let it drag for you, then you go back and work on it. You can do anything literally. You can even write a book on ChatGPT. So now let's, let, let's do a little bit of a deep dive. So as a career professional, maybe you have your CV. And now some people share some prompts, you know, and I think those prompts are really powerful. In fact, I pasted them, you know, what you can do on ChatGPT as well, you can paste your, your CV and tell it to apply to a job for you. So for example, I can post a CV, I can find a CV, and then I tell it to rewrite that resume and customize it to a job. It can do that yeah. for you. So let's try something like that. Rewrite my resume and customize it as my job. So the question is, do I have any resume here? I don't think so. Um, but this is an example. We write my resume. No, tell you to write a resume afresh. In fact, tell you to write a, write a resume for me with um, focused on human resources, human resources profession with eight years of it or with seven years of experience. And several certifications. Let's see. Now, this is not teaching you guys to cheat, but it, it is now up to you. <laughs> it's up to you to do what you want to do with it. Type OpenAI on Google, then click on Try ChatGPT. You'll see it there, and then it will be you here. Guys, can you see the resume that AI is creating for me? Can you see, can you see the magic? Certifications, education. You can literally arrange your resume here, paste it here and tell it to rewrite it for you. Now, somebody will say, but you guys are doing um, resume writing as a service in Outnovate Africa. Yes, we do. And that is where wisdom comes in, right? You don't just tell AI to also, and we're gonna get there. The idea is, for AI to give you wisdom, to give you leverage, and to give you a starting point. It's still left for you to go and sit down and make this work for you. But at the preliminary level, it can do literally anything you want it to do. So guys, give me suggestions in the comments because I want this to be very practical. What are you thinking about right now? What do you want it to do for you? Please drop it in the comment section and let's try it out. Just give us anything. Let's try it out. Try anything, think of anything, just drop it in the chat room. You can ask a question, review CVs. Yes, you can put your CV and tell it to review, but there's no CV here to put. But something, scientific research, absolutely. Do a scientific research on, on what? I mean, I wanted you guys to give me specific. Do a scientific research on banana. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Create social media content. Oh, exactly. We're going to do that. See, he's already doing the research on banana. On nanotechnology. Yeah, hey. Exam exactly. So you can try anything. You can stop generating. Like, okay, say no. Create a 30 days social media content plan for a for what brand now? For an HR consulting firm. 
consulting firm. Let's go. HR advisory firm. Awesome. Let's see what he does. And now the part we are going to, because there's something called prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is just your capacity to ask the right questions on ChatGPT. And what you ask will determine what you ask. So we have three, mini, three minutes more for our 40 minute timeline. That's interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> we have two options. We either wrap up and then we join again because I don't want to join videos. Um, so we have options, right? Is that we wrap up yet? And then we join again. Should we join again when this expires? Are you guys going to click again and join? so that I can just put um, a wrap up thought to this. Yes, okay, great. So look at what he just did. He just gave me 30 good you know, content plan for an HR advisory firm. So look at the quality of what is exposed there. Week five, career development. Week four, company culture and engagement. Week three, industry news and updates. And then it has given you what you should talk about, compliance and updates, benefit updates, recruitment tests. Now you can tell it now to develop it further. Thank you. Please develop this content. Please develop each content. Now, it has given you a suggestion. You are now telling me to remember what it has said to then build something. So guess what is going to happen? Now, it's going to give you a detailed breakdown of each content idea for 30 days. Now, you can still develop this further. You can tell it to give you the image you know, caption. You can tell it to write an article on each one. Now, your prompting would determine the quality of what you get. And that is really what you're saying. So it has revolutionized the future of work. And that's why even you, you should stand strong with it. Because it is not, it, it is not what will take your job. It's the people who use it. So imagine now, there's no excuse for you not to be a social media manager now. Because there are people who don't have time to sit down on this. There are top executives and entrepreneurs. All these are mothers, people who are doing business online. They can't do this thing. So it's not about, oh, I didn't study social media in the university. You can do this, sit down with this and offer that service to them. So you can monetize this even beyond your own you know, work. You can begin to think about monetization models for ChatGPT, And then your level of prompting will determine what you get in return. So we have just one minute more, but I'm going to talk. I'm going to join back, go back to the platform. But before we go, I really want to talk about you know the prompt engineering. But get back. Prompt engineering is a process of creating effective prompts for AI models, and so it means you carefully crafting. Somebody is on. Yeah, can you please mute your mic? Carefully crafting the input or the test in a way that you can get the desired response. That is the issue I have with a lot of people. Oh, you are me. Please mute yourself. People don't know how to ask, and that's why they don't get the right responses. And that's why these are the examples of prompt engineering that I put together. Start with a clear and specific goal. Know what you want ChatGPT to write for you. We're going to pop. It's going to go off now, but you know, don't worry. Um, you guys can click on the link and get back there. So, but I wanted to end on this page. <laughs> The second thing, use natural language. There's no need to speak too many English. Go as straight and plain as possible. Let your prompt be clear. It will understand you, don't worry. The third is provide context. So that's why you say something like, 